have to call to order our voting session. And I ask you to stand, please, for the pledge. Ready to begin? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have no report on the closed session this evening, and I ask for a motion to adopt our agenda. So no. Changes their additions to the agenda. There's a, a change, uh, just a uh, correction to consent item uh, 13C. Appreciate uh, Board Member Perry uh, for highlighting we had a, an error in the calculation um, of the total fiscal impact for the uh, belief uh, blueprint, blueprints for effective leadership and instruction for English learners. It, it changed the total of 2,731, about 20, 21. Um, the end total. The end total, total, correct. It was 585 to 60. But, uh, okay, with that change, all those in favor of the agenda as presented? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, we have no recognitions this evening. It's time for a public comment on non agenda items. I don't have any blue cards. Is there anyone that wishes to speak on an item not on the agenda? Then we'll move to reports. And our first report is a student breath. And we have a colleague back and a new breath. Yes, so this is Piper. She's also in my grade. So she's the new student board representative. So we'll kind of alternate between both of us or both of us at the same time. Um, so the first two weeks have gone by pretty successfully, I believe. I mean, I'm a junior, so I have, kind of have this wrap up a little bit. Um, so, but before school started, we had Link Crew, which was, I think, I was in Link Crew. Yeah, so Link Crew was the two weeks, or like a week before school started, or a couple weeks before school started, where we had all the freshmen come and, um, kind of got them into the spirit of school so they weren't as scared. So they got to see the school and play games with us so they felt more as a community than um, just a small freshman coming to the school. And I know it benefited them because I was a freshman and I uh, didn't go to the Linker meeting because I thought it was stupid. But I was just, I was like, my mom's like, you should go. And I was like, no. And, but I'm really glad that I got to be a part of it because it's really beneficial for them because I was so scared that I walked into the wrong classrooms the first day of school Thing. Um, so Link Crew happened and then there was break a day. Um, so the first day of school, Link Crew also wore their t-shirts so that the students that didn't go to Link Crew meeting and didn't have the tour or just still didn't have the whole wrap of the campus under, um, understood that they would come up to us and ask us where classes were and everything. And so I got a couple kids to have me, um, have me walk them to classes and stuff, but other than that, it seemed like they did a really good job. Um, so then now this year, we also have a new drop period. It's 10 days instead of 15 days. Um, that's ending on Monday. Um, ASB is honing in on school spirit, and they actually painted um, Point Break in the center. So we have a student section, which I think is really, really cool because a lot of kids are interested in boosting our spirit and pep at um, every school event so that we can be more of a community than we have been in the past. Um, so this Friday actually is a blackout football game, so we're all black if you guys are going to go. Um, then we also have a new student luncheon, which Piper and I are kind of organizing on Friday in the patio next to the office. And you guys can stop by and see the new students that were either um, juniors, seniors, everyone. So it's not just freshmen getting a little orientation, so now it's a little um, inclusive of all grades. Um, so, and then we're announcing the homecoming theme on, at break on Thursday instead of Friday because we're going to Dana Point to see how Dana does their pep assemblies and how, because um, they're kind of the set, they set the stage for ASB and um, PEP because of OCL, which is the Orange Coast League, which is um, kind of ASB camp. Um, so that we're going to kind of take notes and see what they do to boost our pep and assemblies. They have two pep assemblies, so we're going to one of them. <laughs> so yeah, that's going to be on Friday. Um, and then El Moro on Top of the World have their open houses Wednesday and Thursday. 
and then the Thurston High School followed a couple weeks after that. Um, and then there was just the fall play auditions last week, and they cast the play really quick. We had call back from the weekend, and then the plays casted, and our first read through is tonight. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the first two weeks of school record. <laughs> Okay, for sports, um, I play golf, so we played our first golf match yesterday, or not first, but our first league game, and we won. Um, I believe we scored 222. Um, the preseason football games, not football, sorry, um, all sports are starting, or not all sports, but most sports, and then football, just had a game in Big Bear, and then like Chloe said, we were playing Orange this Friday home, and it's a blackout game. Um, cross country, went to Hawaii last week for the Lawani invite. The boys placed fourth, fourth, and the girls team placed third. Um, Evie Kant, who's a senior, she won the race by 30 seconds. Um, and let's see, um, baseball practice has started and they play mostly all year, and surf tryouts are this week. And to add on to this uh, um, academic report, we also, um, well obviously you guys know, but the uh, English department has implemented uh, No Place for Hate, and so we had conversations about that this weekend in English class. Um, I have Mr. Brobeck, and he did a really good job of explaining to students that we're not the only um, people out there in the world that we have to respect others and their differences and diversity is a really key concept to our town and that we should accept and love everyone for who they are and so he did a really good job of explaining that and um, same with the rest of the English departments what they're going to continuously do throughout the year so that kids understand the importance of diversity. Yeah. Thank you. So many questions for At our last school board meeting, we just had our first day of the unconscious bias training, and um, it's one of the few trainings that we've ever had that all the feedback has been positive on. So um, all of the teachers and staff that attended have come back and said they felt like it was really positive all the way through. Sometimes we lose that momentum by the end, but everyone reported that they felt like it was impactful all the way through. They're hoping to have another opportunity for it for those teachers that didn't and staff who hadn't had an opportunity to attend. They said the last day, she kind of even finished up the curriculum, and so they moved into um, discussions on privilege rather than just unconscious bias. So they felt like that was very impactful. Um, everyone wants to extend our gratitude for the great opening of school. They appreciated the breakfast, that was great, and that it went quickly, and everyone had more time in their classrooms, which they loved. <laughs> loved the health fair that um, they put together. So. We won't have anyone complaining that they didn't get the information because everything was there for them. And I thought that was really well received. People enjoyed being out there. Um, they really loved the keynote speaker that we had on the brain. I think when he first started speaking, we were all like, wait, what? But it was so impactful, I think, for everyone that was there. And those who got to hear him later really enjoyed that. Our school culture days came back all positive. Um, the teachers said that although they already had good feelings and camaraderie, they felt like among staff members, this just took it all to another level. And elementary loved the high energy of their presenter. I, I, I guess it was the wife of somebody. They said it was very high energy that was with them. High school had teachers in tears, a lot of emotion in, um, in ours, and great opportunity to get to know our new principal in there and for people to connect. And the middle school said, again, they were the ones that said, we feel like we've had strong staff relationships, but this really just helped us um, take it to the next place. And so everyone felt like this gave us a really strong start to the school year and the power of us that we've talked about. A lot of things had to come together for the technology and student placement and parents dealing with student placement and all of those things have been a part of the school year. And then the no place for hate is also a great thing because um, I think it's very impactful for us to be doing something all the way across the district where it starts in elementary and works its way up. And so you share the high school uh, perspective of that with elementary but also then implementing it as well as the middle school. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm going to read to you what I sent out to my classified staff. So I'll be brief with it, but uh, administration, some of you have already seen this, but I feel that in communicating with the classified staff, 
so that they know what's going on. And I could add you to the email, but then you'd get more emails than you'd want. So I sent this out a few days ago. It says, classified members, welcome to the new school year 2017-2018. What a great beginning. The unconscious bias training was terrific. Thanks to Dr. Odipo and Ms. Hawkins for arranging the workshop. Two and a half days learning more about the members we work with and understanding ourselves and the way we think and the way we do what we do. Welcome to the 15 plus new classified staff. We had a very productive orientation presentation for all new staff. Thank you to HR for providing the information our members need to be the very best. And at that time, we are also allowed as uh, association uh, to speak with our members and uh, there's more to come on that but I'm not supposed to speak about it at the moment um, and back to school breakfast was as usual a great time to see old friends and meet new friends congratulations to Gwen Myers our school spirit award we are all aware of your years of commitment and dedication to LBUSD and the community and then I took a little excerpt from Dr. Valoria's themes of every student every day the comments about that continuous improvement and focus on relationships um, I also went on to say the health fair was very informative and fun, and thank you to Ms. Winston and her HR team for planning this event. Wednesday school culture training at each site sparked numerous responses. Truly inspiring, eye-opening relationships with members I've never had a chance to talk with, and thought-provoking, just a few of the comments. Thursday's training for IAs and teachers was inclusive and informative. We are truly prepared to assist our certificated staff with the goals of our district. Training for health clerks and PE coaches were also included. The keynote speaker I put Ken Weston was so engaging. I hope that you share your experiences with other members of the team. Everyone just spoke about how incredible he was. And for the IAs, this is written here, the IAs in the afternoon session, we were about 50 of us with this incredible speaker who really had us stand up and do lots of things. And you could just see in people's eyes that they were like, wow, and a couple of, I've never heard someone so intelligent, you know, because he would go off and he had these slides. And when you really stop and think about how the brain works, it's a really complex organism we have up here, this organ that, that works for us. So people were just really, I mean, I have to tell you that was, well worth the inclusiveness of bringing in the IAs for that. Um, uh, the, uh, have the agenda, because as I said, this went out. And uh, we are also gonna be having site representative workshops immediately following our business meeting. So this has been very important to, I think, our sites more than um, in the district because we wanna make sure that our site representatives are really doing what they're supposed to be doing and at the same time alerting if there are issues to someone so that we can act on these issues early on. Um, and I and uh, Robert DeWitz will be doing these workshops together and they're gonna be after our meetings. And uh, so I go on to say a few other things there. But um, the other things just, I know Ken loves this, boo grants start in October. So those, that's for our scholarship. So if you see those things going around, you'll know why. Um, and an interesting concept is happening with our Orange County Field Office that on December 5th, uh, we're gonna be each negotiation team at another school district, which I don't know if that's been totally decided, will be at the Orange County Field Office for interspace bargaining. And I don't know why, why we're mixing with certain groups, but it'll be interesting because maybe it'll give them a perspective of how things, the way we do it, and perhaps that things can be done very collaboratively. So I'm hoping that's the direction we're going in. And uh, as Mindy also said, um, in our orientation for TOW, uh, Mr. Conlon, one of the key things uh, was no place for hate. And I think as we introduce that to our children and the students that we work with every day, it does bring in the idea that that's just not what we're about. So with that, thank you. We have representatives from organizations here tonight, the PTA. The <coughs> PTA Council President, Sheila Parker. Hi, everyone. Okay, uh, the 2017-2018 PTA Council kicked off our first meeting last Thursday here in the boardroom. And uh, again, this year, 
The goals of the PTA Council will be to continue to focus on resources, training, guidance, and mentoring of our units, and as well as promoting, supporting, and providing parent education. Um, our first PTA Coffee Talk, we rebranded Coffee Break to Coffee Talk, um, <coughs> parent education series will be the state of our schools, and that is Wednesday, September 20th at 8.30 until uh, 10 a.m. at Hotel Laguna. And then all of the PTA units will have their first association meetings coming up throughout the month of September. And more information can be found on their individual unit websites about the meetings. And that right now is all that we have to report because we're just getting going. So thank you. Thank you. Robin, Ms. Power. So I really don't have much to report. Um, this is the time of the year where no matter what we do the year before, we start at zero again. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we look forward to maintaining all of our current commitments to you all and, and also in positioning school power uh, so that we can meet your future requests and priorities as they come up throughout the year. So I brought some dates for you all to save and um, that's it for you, the other officers for your executive board are the same. Yeah, our first trustee, we had a great executive retreat over the summer was really inspiring and strategic. Uh, we're focusing on young families a lot this year and participation. We have a kind of a crazy ambitious goal of um, 900 families and really focusing on getting uh, even more of the community involved, which I think fantastic focus. Um, Kristen Winter is our new president for this year. Mike Houlihan is our vice president. So I think it'll, it'll be a really strong year. Our next trust, our trustee meeting is on the 20th. Any other organizations that have representatives here? If not, we'll move to board members. There hasn't been much going on yet. I did it, I did it now um, last Friday, and um, Dr. Keller and Dr. Epo were there and knocked it out of the ballpark. Um, I think it's the, the questions that the endowment board asked and the answers that were received, I think. Um, to themselves, and they were everyone was very impressed. Dr. Keller is so knowledgeable, and I think everyone feels that uh, that the underneath was was appropriate and um, well. It's going to be well, well used, and I, 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 I speaking for myself, um, I got her left again um, simply because I really think the right people are with us. I think we can really do some good. Um, just um, we needed to do a vote for the Orange County Committee on the School District Organization, which tackles issues like redistricting, uh, the manner in which school board members are elected, if it's representing a certain part of the city or the city as a whole. Um, uh, like in Braille, they're going to be reduced from nine board members down to five, and how they are trying to figure that out. Boundary changes, disputes among school districts, and also requests from different county groups. Luckily, um, there were three openings and only three people running, so there was no reason <laughs> to run around and meet everybody. And so I hope you guys are okay with just voting for the three that would like to do this. Okay, I've right, it in. Uh, one is from Laguna Miguel, that's for District District Five. Um, that's Sheila Benke. And there's one from Fullerton. And I forget what the other one is. But they've all been on for a long time. And then the Community Coalition today, and also um, Dr. Keller and Dr. Allman were there, and they were excited about everything that our district is doing with the No Place for Pay. All those things, and then there were a lot of different uh, services there talking about offering what they can do to help students and young people. Orange County Health Services, California Youth Services, Mission Hospital is doing an introduction to mindfulness for 11 to 15 year olds and their parents. So they're doing an intro and then a six week course for people. And they talked about it being kind of like a superpower because it, it, if you can get hold of that part and stop anger and just think and go on with things, it really does give you power. Um, they also took 
um, Dr. Gloria's uh, suggestion and, and reached out to San Diego Alliance and are looking at what, what they did that made the most impact. And I guess their driving program was kind of number one. So looking at that, maybe doing something like that. Uh, Mission Hospital is also doing a parent date night again, two times a year, where a, a student can have a night just with their parents. They provide dinner and then a speaker. Uh, like they did Dale Carnegie last year, which was really well, well received, as well as Ray Lozano. And then they are also offering uh, kind of a 40 about five minute class on the influence of media and advertising. So you're looking at, you know, the six main persuasive techniques, you know, teaching students how, how to think critically about it, how to deconstruct an ad, so that's another offering that they have. Thank you. I, I attended the first PTA council meeting and uh, they were all there enthusiastic already talking about how much membership they have. <laughs> After two days? Right. <laughs> because they do it. I know. And they register online or fill out all their forms online. And then Sheila didn't mention, but they changed uh, along with that coffee talk that if you join the PTA, it's that you don't pay to go to the place. Yes. So that's uh, um, increased PTA membership, but also to encourage people to attend. I think when they started videoing the blocks and so this way we will encourage people to come back. They hope. Anyway, it was a good meeting and uh, they're all being very ambitious with a lot of uh, new people stepping up from leadership positions. Um, Thurston's PTA is tomorrow, right, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have a new president. We do. Jimmy, Jimmy Azadini. 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 Right. Um, and that was it for the meeting. Um, I just want to. Hearing Mindy and Margaret speak, I think that it was, I don't know who whose idea it was to really personalize the professional development, but it obviously was really successful. And I think when we got that printout of all the different things offered on Phil's Culture Day, is that the, but whatever the title was, it obviously really was well received, but it was very meaningful. So that, rather than having just one for everybody, so good job. Uh, first and foremost, thanks to the school board uh, for uh, allowing us to have the various uh, presenters that we were able to bring in. So between Phil Boyd and his staff that uh, the board approved the contract uh, back in uh, late spring to have uh, him come and help us do culture days at all of our school sites, as you heard, it was very well received from staff uh, to our guest speaker, Dr. Bob Brain, who I, I think people honestly, even though it was hot in that theater, could have stayed there much, much longer myself included, he was um, uh, just his approach. And I mean, when he was, he said, close your eyes because he was going through all the slides because he was trying to hit some key things. And his, he probably had, I don't know, 200 plus slides that he could have covered of material. And uh, it was very, all very interesting stuff. And so uh, my much appreciation to Alicia, Dr. Vivo, and her staff for putting together that personalized day uh, that really did meet the needs of, of all of our uh, staff who were out there supporting students on a day-to-day -day basis, so um, great work all the way around. It's been a really positive start, thanks to my staff and administrators, uh, classified staff, uh, certificate staff. Really, it's uh, we are focused on our students, we're focused on them every day, and that's what we're going to continue to do. Um, the No Place for Hate uh, work that spawned out of, really, uh, some of our teachers who wanted to bring forward a, a continuum K-12 conversation and shared language. And uh, it was uh, something that uh, Dr. Odeep and I were able to, to work with and help support. But really, it's great to see the teachers behind me and really wanting to do this in their classrooms on a day in and day out basis. So, uh, special thanks to, to John Honeycutt, to Dr. Allman, uh, and staff at the high school for their work, uh, Jenny Solberg and her staff. I know we're already planning, as Jenny always does. Um, uh, Chris and Mike as well um, with their teachers, uh, Sarah Woolsey, Mary Blanton, I know have been in constant conversation about how we're going to really make this meaningful that our kids are going to see this every day in our interactions. So again, so it's just, it's just nice to see and nice to hear such positive things coming from that work. Um, 
we are still processing our SMC verifications and our, data, and our data confirmations. I know our school sites are working through that. Um, it's just the process that we have, and I know that it can be tedious at times, and we appreciate our families that are getting that done. Um, I was going to welcome Piper. Um, I know they had to step out, and, and Chloe, we are working to uh, have them continue to stay on and be more part of our board meetings, and uh, we will be uh, expecting the future board meetings that they will be sticking on the longer part of those discussions, especially when there's uh, items that they were very interested in, which they had some last year that I knew they were interested in. So. I think they just had it because I didn't excuse it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that a little bit. They yeah. actually contacted us. I know. <laughs> yeah. so, and then last but not least, uh, special thanks to uh, Lance Neal, our amazing athletic director of the high school, who uh, helped put on a, a workshop for our coaches and coaches all throughout the region, um, athletes. Uh, we hosted it on Saturday, and uh, just a lot of work. Not only were we kicking off our sports season and all the work that goes into that, um, Lance it just goes above and beyond. It didn't go well. And it went well, and uh, uh, we won't host it again. So <laughs> I think uh, Lance was able to get, uh, I think they got hosted in Tustin at the, there's a center, the learning center there that is a great uh, place next year. Um, but we were able to do that, had speakers coming in, and uh, again, just a lot of work. So. It's, it's nice to have other coaches and people come in and see our facilities. Um, the comments I traditionally hear um, are that when they're inside and outside of our classrooms, again, testament to the, the uh, emphasis that we put and, and you as school board put on our facilities, top notch. Um, you know, when you walk into those snow, new fourth new four CLE classrooms um, throughout all of our campuses, but especially up in high school, um, those new uh, English classrooms are just amazing. So again, thanks for all the work. It does not happen like that, it takes time and deliveries and putting the furniture together and all those things. So, great start. Okay. Uh, just a couple things. Um, our hiring is almost complete. So we have just the last few positions for finishing up. So uh, we've almost got everybody in the right seat. <laughs> um, and then I just wanted to mention the volunteer process, the new volunteer procedures that we're rolling out in accordance with the new board policy that you revised last spring. Um, is going very well. We've had several parents who have been very responsive um, to the new process and are getting their fingerprints done, those who will be going on our overnight trips. I think the first one is Thurston Science Camp. And I just want to say Lisa Brackus is doing a great job staying on top of all of that. Um, and I also wanted to thank um, the principals for rolling out the communication consistently to parents to keep them informed um, and keep getting the information out in front of them about the new procedures. Um, and to Andy Chris, who just did a promotional video for us. So we'll be able to share that on social media, and um, it'll be on our new volunteer page on our website where we have all of the information about um, the new procedures. Good. Well, since Coach Neal's still here, I want to say, um, as you'll know on the consent item, item F, there's a donation because there's a lot of excitement around the new program that you had approved for us. So thank you. That second meeting in May, you had fully approved all the funding needed for these programs and we're already getting donations so that we can purchase additional equipment and expedite some of the purchases that we had planned in future years. So thank you for your support on those programs. And I know Coach Neil and I are both always happy to receive money and extra funding. <laughs> <laughs> the Top of the World Modular Buildings are going to start their first delivery this Saturday. So uh, Mr. Zeta back there has worked very closely with the police department as they do require full escorts. Due to Caltrans restrictions, they come in actually between, what is it, Brian? Uh, midnight and 2 a.m.? They have to be off the uh, streets by 6 o'clock. So by 6 o'clock, they have to be off at 1.33 or post five. So we worked out a staging plan. Parts of Park Avenue will have no parking allowed. And uh, Ryan has been working on distributing flyers to all of our neighbors. This will happen. That's what that was. This will happen. I thought they were, but I didn't have dates on it. Yes, the utility companies are going to be on site. They're going to potentially have to lift some wires, and it's going to happen this Saturday and next Saturday. What time? I just kind of stuff. Like Seven thirty a.m. I'm a little late. I know. I'm done. But they have to be on by six. They'll be they'll be driving a park right around seven thirty for our first load in. Yes, I love this stuff. Seven thirty at night. Morning, morning. They're going to stage them off the one thirty-three. Oh, because they don't have to be there. Correct. They'll be off the interstate at that point. They'll stage them out at the entrance to uh, to the Grand Canyon. They will load two first, just so we make sure we don't 
bring all of the trucks in at once and have a problem. So we'll start with two and see how it goes, and then if everything goes well, we'll bring the rest of them in shortly thereafter. So, so it'll be exciting on Saturday. <laughs> Sadly, this is the kind of stuff I get excited. I know. Are the ones still right at side fence, or have they moved on? No, I think they moved on. I hope they moved on. Last update I have is regarding Senate Bill 751, which had to do with the reserve cap. Now, there's good news on the front where CTA and CSBA have reached a deal as the bill's been amended. And it raises the cap, but it still exempts basically school districts. It's expected to make it to the governor's office for signature. And because those two organizations are behind it now together, um, hopefully we have some good news and it gets all the way through. So I'll provide more update as we find out more, but I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention tonight. Okay. Great evening. So congratulations again to our administrators for a great start. Uh, as a reminder, we have back to school night at TOW on Wednesday and tomorrow on Thursday. Uh, but I do think congratulations are due to our full day kinder teachers. We're really excited about that change. Uh, Dr. Keller and I met with El Moro staff on the first full day um, of kinder. They were a little tired, um, <laughs> but um, the staff they, 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 they were probably to stay a step ahead of their students, so we're excited with them. Um, just a quick announcement that Juntos will start on October 2nd, and we're excited about that. Um, and the dyslexia guidelines are out, so Irene and her committee are well underway with their work of screeners and identifying best placement for students and um, identifying ways to fill those gaps sooner. So, thank you. Thank you. Is there any news at all that um, start time bill that happened was going, today? The uh, assembly was going to vote on it today. It didn't make it for a vote today. Um, my understanding is. Uh, more than likely by the, by the end of this week, we will, so there will be a chance tomorrow. Um, and then it will go back to the Senate because there was an amendment because they added language related to uh, uh, agreements that we have. So a certificate agreement, so you, have, you can trump the uh, labor agreement that would have existed. So uh, they've added some language around that. So, so we'll see what, where it ends up, but we should know by the end of the week. Thank you. Uh, we have a public hearing. Hearing to ensure availability of textbooks and instructional materials for 2017-18, and certification of the Division of Standards Aligned Instructional Materials for Code Sections 60119 and 60422. This public hearing was posted on August 31st, and we will have a resolution to vote on as action item 15. Is there any comment or comment on this public hearing? Seeing none, that will close the public hearing. enough to be the principal of K-12 summer school. I have with me my coordinators, Stacy Chiari was the coordinator of 9 through 12, and Dustin Gowan, K-8. Amazing job, the coordinators, and I'm so grateful for them. Um, our attendance data was pretty impressive. LBHS had first um, session, 89 students attended, second session, 75. Um, we had 19 courses available. For credit recovery, we, we had 126 students participating in credit recovery. Odyssey, we are online. That's also credit recovery. We had seven students. GradPoint, which is our new online um, credit recovery uh, program, we had 58 students participating. So it's sort of our pilot summer um, to prepare for this year as we rolled it out. 
Um, we had 19 students participate in advancement. That's our Gov Econ class. Uh, for ELD, we had four students. Breaker Advance was a new program that uh, some teachers and uh, Dr. Odebo put together this summer. Um, we had 20 students participate in that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in just a second. And for special education, we had two students participate. At TMS, we had 153 students. SDC, we had 18 students. ELD, we had 35 students. That's very exciting. Um, preparing for the school year, so having that language development course was wonderful to provide that for them. Um, elementary students, we had 103. Middle school, ELA and math, we had 32. Um, and then I'd like to talk a little bit about our summer class that the teachers and Dr. Odebo put together, um, Breaker Advance. It was a introduction to AP classes for students who wouldn't normally take an AP class. Um, it was a five-day workshop with essential skills focused on all disciplines, reading, comprehension, note-taking, writing, critical thinking, math analysis, and um, science skills. It encouraged those students, it gave them kind of a taste of it um, to excite them about taking an, a rigorous class, and it provided the teacher support um, that they um, needed in order to even think about taking one of those. They had a field trip to UCI Genetics Lab to investigate cancer cells. Um, uh, they discussed this in a novel that they read. Um, the students were very excited about this. Um, they took a million photographs. As you can see, they were completely engaged in every, every photograph that I saw. Um, they were able to meet with the lab personnel and really get a personal experience, um, giving them that schema for that text that they read. Um, and I just, I, I want to say, if you had the chance to walk through any of the summer school classes, phenomenal. It didn't matter, K-12, on day one, they hit the ground running. Those teachers had those students engaged and learning and excited. And if you got a chance to go up to TMS where they had the elementary, I couldn't believe they transferred, um, transformed middle school classrooms into elementary classrooms. I mean, they had decorations on the walls and they brought in trucks full of stuff. I mean, moving out was, I just, I was just so impressed with that stuff. So. Phenomenal staff, phenomenal programs, and I was fortunate to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Stacy. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for letting me graduate from K-8 and move to the high school. It was very nice. I really enjoyed working with the older students and the high school staff. Um, we did implement a couple things. We ran a similar program to past years with direct instruction, and that was with geometry with Ms. Sorensen. We had English with Mr. Hendrickson. We had our ELD and our SPED. And of course, our nice advancement course with Econ and Government. And I spent a little bit of time talking to the students that was Econ Gov students, and I asked, why are you spending your summer doing this? And they shared, it just opens up that opportunity their senior year to take an additional class, which then allows them to be a little bit more sparkly to the colleges. So they do appreciate, so thank you for continuing that program for our students. And also our social studies. Because we're one-to-one, -one, we were able to see a lot more students with direct instruction utilizing their one-to-one -one devices. Um, in addition to our direct instruction, we were able to pilot GradPoint, which is our new credit recovery program at the high school. And we were able then to combine Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 into the same classroom. And we supported them with a credential teacher as well as myself. I would come by and give them help. Um, in one of the Algebra 2 classes at the beginning of our first session, one of the students asked me, Ms. Chiardi, do you think second session I can do pre-calculus? I'm like, well, I don't know. We've never offered pre-calculus in summer school, but it's on grad point, so let's take a peek. And I looked at the curriculum, and I said, it looks like it's similar to our second semester. However, it has a little physics. He says, oh, I'm not afraid of physics. And he was able to complete his remediation of pre-calculus during our summer program. So I was impressed with that. Um, something else that we were able to add that we haven't had for quite a while are the sciences, biology, and chemistry because GradPoint offers a live lab. So they were able to actually do the lab during their summer program so kids were able to recover those credit units as well. Um, students were able to work on their own pace, so we did not have a teacher saying you need to be at, on this page on this day. Kids who finished early were able to leave once they were done with their final, which is kind of a nice incentive. And students who actually needed an extra couple days, we were able to extend that into our second session of summer school. So we were really able to meet the needs of our own students. Um, there were online tutorials, plus they were able to access other tutorials because of their one-to-one -one devices. 
And I was just really impressed with the program, and I appreciate it. And it was nice that Jason shared his school with me. Thank you. Okay, so I uh, coordinated the uh, K-8 summer school. And uh, one of the big instructional shifts that we emphasized this summer was station teaching. That's where you take a vertically aligned lesson and you uh, kind of station that horizontally so kids can move activity to activity while increasing their engagement and covering a wide variety of um, curriculum within the same amount of time. So that was an emphasis this year and we found it to be pretty successful as was reported earlier, the engagement in the classrooms were um, pretty phenomenal. We were able to utilize um, our new adoptions for ELA and elementary and then our already adopted and are also some of our new adopted um, programs for uh, middle school as well. Um, the supplemental materials, we've utilized them in the past, but they have new programs that are utilizing them in slightly different ways, like with uh, readworks.org. Uh, there was a program called Article of the Day, and um, kids were able to read really high uh, interest and engaging articles that were at kind of set uh, Lexile levels to really uh, expand their engagement and increase uh, the rigor. Um, but work on main idea and key details, like really um, get solid on summarizing. Um, we utilized uh, Lexia and My Access, which are some um, digital curriculum that have some AI features to them. Um, the uh, uh, emphasis in math uh, was basically core curriculum with RTI materials, um, adaptive curriculum, and then also um, I did a lot of coaching. Uh, with FactsWise, which is, increases um, algebraic reasoning and fact fluency um, with elementary uh, school students. Um, we continued our relationship with the Crystal Cove Conservancy um, and facilitated uh, field trips to Crystal Cove that were in GSS based. Um, so um, we had several uh, different grade spans go and participate on lessons that we created last summer that we're able to refine, and then we created some new lessons this summer as well. And so um, kind of leads us to our outcomes. I'd say across the board, we had some really positive outcomes. The uh, secondary had favorable literacy outcomes. The um, foundational skills, especially. Um, primary math showed the greatest gains, and we had some phenomenal teaching, and I think the emphasis um, on foundational math skills were, was very solid. And then I was really pleasantly surprised by the writing gains in our intermediate grades. And we just want to thank the board for the support and the principals for the support. Jenny, thank you so much for the use of your school. Um, Phenomenal staff, the engagement, the enrichment that goes on during summer school is, I've never seen anything like it. Um, we're just, we're fortunate to have that in our school district, and we just thank you so much for letting us be a part of it. So, thank you. Questions or comments? Any questions? Sorry. I just wanted the students that are, that are invited to come to the summer programs, they need the remediation. Uh, what, how many did you get? I mean, I know you gave us the numbers and how many came, but were there some that didn't come? I'm sure there are some that chose not to come. I can get you those numbers if you like. I, just I can look at the invitation list. That's been a challenge. Is to, you know, we, we make the offer, but they don't always, but I shouldn't say the students, the parents don't always take advantage of it. So I'm just was curious how it was, if we had been seeing improvement in that area of emphasizing to the parents how important it is. So yeah, I can certainly look Just a on. curiosity. Okay. And I was just wondering, um, how, how do you feel that it's added to your effectiveness by using so many of these online programs? I think it allows the students the freedom and the flexibility to work at their own pace. And I think that's highly valuable. As a student that struggled in math myself, I think it would have been nice to slow down, rewatch the tutorial, freeze it, you know, try it myself, and go back. I think you see a lot of students that love that ability, or they can go home, maybe today is not their day, they can go home and rewatch that lesson. Um, and then they also had the added bonus of not only having their teacher, but they also had Miss Garrity who came through their classrooms every day. Um, she was faithful to go in there. If they needed extra support, um, she was there for them. So I think the, the online programs are beneficial and they could also, they have that carrot of finishing and leaving as soon as they were complete about their entire study program, so. 
So Stacy, you were saying this is the one student who was doing algebra two, and then you that you said, were you planning on, on using the pre-calculus? No, we weren't so even you, anticipating so this was just first. a serendipitous and, experience. Right, and he initiated the conversation. I'm like, well, let me look into it. Let me let me make sure the curriculum somewhat aligns. And we looked at the full semesters, and we had to remediate second semester. We had a dialogue. We talked with Alicia. And we said, why not? We have the curriculum. It's there. Let's start using it as a means of our students. And this way, he was able to pass his pre-calculus class. And now, as a senior, he's in calculus instead of having to repeat the pre-calculus. And how long are, the, are each? Because I, I honestly didn't realize there were two sessions at the high school. So right. So it's 12 days for each session. Okay. One semester is 12 days and then 12 days. So it's a lot of math. But mm -hmm. what I found is really beneficial. It is not initial instruction. So it, it is reviewing what you have been taught in the classroom. And I did have a parent question me about the online program. And I did talk to the parent and reiterated that I go through the classroom, which was beneficial. I am credentialed. I have taught all the way through calculus. But I also share that it's not initial instruction. That's, and that's, that, that helps me. That right. makes sense to me now. You know, if it was initial instruction, I as a teacher would have worries. Because how are you going to learn something in 12 days? <laughs> How are you going to do pre-calculus yeah. in 12 days? It's a lot, you know, there's a lot of trig, there's a lot of involvement. But because it is, you know, maybe he didn't get a test, or maybe something, maybe there was a bad day, and, or a couple bad days, who knows what may have caused a bad grade, because it's one semester for him in pre-calculus, but he was able to go through it, get a good grade. And what's nice about Grad Point, it has a cut point. If initially, if you didn't hit that 80%, you weren't allowed to progress to the next unit. You had to hit that eighty percent, which was nice because then they're showing more proficiency than say a sixty percent. And I'm so thankful too that she's um, she was knowledgeable with the program, so she could look at the pre-calculus and she knew whether she could help the student or not. And so that was a factor in it. Do we have support for the student on campus while they take it? Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to offer it. So, thank you very much. She was very careful when she looked through the program to make sure that we could support the student. I can see how the students that needed remediation would really be helped by this flexibility, like you said, so they could see something over again and put through things that they got. And we did. It was wonderful to be able to offer that to them. Yeah, and we didn't stop them. If they could finish first semester, we let them go a couple days into second semester, however long they needed, and that was amazing. So. All right, all about flexibility. Thank all about you. the kids. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
17, Google Social Skills Facilitation Project for the Boys and Girls Club of Virginia Beach in the amount of $52,400. Tax practices in the Social Skills Facilitation Project, yes, but it has been in place for several years, initially covered by a school powered by this district funded at this time. We really appreciate your support. Any public comment? Board questions? It's a great program.
note that I mean one of the, the challenges that we face is uh, when we approve a, a connected organization to fundraise on behalf of the school district in a way and of our students. Um, there are um, with that the implications that we will help monitor and or uh, ensure that they are uh, doing it into the best nature of what their position is. So uh, PTA has always been fantastic. They have process procedures in place. Uh, we are going to work with our uh, athletic boosters and performing arts boosters to ensure that our processes fall in line with our requirements as well as a school district to ensure the fidelity programs and all these other programs as well that exist. We have rules related to how we receive donations, how money is counted. Um, it's, uh, those are all things that we are obligated as well to, to follow when we fundraise on behalf of an outside group potentially, um, whether it's the Civic Marine Mammal Center. Uh, where we simply pass them the money across, which is much easier. If we have to bring money into our accounts, it uh, becomes more cumbersome, but we are we have the ability to do that. We just have to work through those steps. So we have audit guidelines as well as something that we must have to follow. So. Okay. We do not audit, um, and uh, however, um, part of the uh, we're working on kind of cleaner guidelines around what we recommend as a school district around um, auditing. Uh, many of the groups have, there's outside groups, you know, our masters, for example, there are some entities, we, uh, but for our business organizations, we would recommend, highly recommend. And in fact, um, uh, we, there are some school districts that request audits from their business organizations just because, again, they're fundraising on behalf of, of our students and we're authorizing that. So there's a just an extension. So again, we're working through that. We will work through with our groups to Ensure and, and continue to make it so it's part of the monitoring for our kids. I mean, that's the point uh, that we want to make sure that our kids are the ones getting the dollars and we're able to support that moving forward. So, this is just another tool. PTAs do do it. PTAs so as, as, as part of the right, as part of the PTAs. So, we very similar to that. Mm -hmm. the energy right. So, we have a sample out that we're working with. Again, Lance has uh, uh, the booster of the handbook that he's created uh, for athletics that uh, Jeff and I have both. And looking at and we've been talking to our auditors as well to ensure that we are in line with what we need to be doing as well. So our auditors happen to be here right now visiting, not right now. Uh, they, they, they were here pretty late actually. We told them they had to leave because we had a board meeting, but um, they're here and they give us a lot of feedback as well related to uh, process procedures and uh, accounting. Here, I'll add four short slides. This is the same presentation, formatted the same as last year, but summarizes what you see in the, uh, on the unaudited actuals. Uh, you can see our timeline here. We began our budget adoption, of course, July 1. This is a reflection of last fiscal year, so you know it's an 18 month cycle. Uh, we had our first interim report, our second interim, and this is the point at, we're at today with the unaudited actuals that needs to be done prior to September 15th. And then, as uh, Dr. Valeria mentioned, our auditors are here this week. So, um, in accordance with this timeline, we'll be back to you before the middle of December with their report. Um, the first section you'll see is that we did meet our No Child Left Behind maintenance of effort, which is to expend more than 55% for a unified school district on classroom instruction. Uh, we were just over 55%, which is almost uh, identical to where we were last year. Uh, GAN limit will be a separate item, and I'll go into more detail on that. But um, we, are, we do have a slight raise in the gamble limit, about half of what we did last year. And our indirect cost rate for fiscal year 2016-17 was a little over 5.5%. So as you can see, uh, this is where we're going to highlight our change in fund balance. And I think one of the important areas that I want to highlight on this is our year-end change in fund balance was a positive a little over $1.8 million. But within that... Um, about half of that is needs to be accounted for with the raise that was provided to staff in total compensation and the 1% off schedule. So it's a little over 900,000. We're still in the process of applying that for our first interim to report back to you. But um, 
good chunk of that is to support the raises. And then in addition to that, we had a fairly good carryover um, with our donations and school power grants, which are unassigned. However, um, I should say they're unrestricted, but they're assigned. And then you'll also see information on our other funds. We have um, cafeteria fund, adult ed, fund 17, which one note that I bring up, I want to bring up today that is going to be a constant message. Our, our uh, budget is, is growing year over year. And with that, we need to be mindful of our basic aid differential. So it's very likely, and we're looking at it closely, but that we will need to start beginning um, more contributions in the fund 17. Um, so that we keep with the board requirement on uh, board policy relating to the uh, um, basic aid differential calculation. Then, of course, you have our fund 40s, which you see the ending fund balances up there. Um, those are as of June 30th, which, as you know, the top of the world project is gone, going right now. So the CIP fund is actually a little bit lower than that because we just made a large uh, commitment towards our vendor. And with that, sorry, I usually have a question slide. But are there any questions that I can answer? Oh, I have a question. Um, the Aliso property. Yes. Will we be able to sweep anything out of that this year, or will it be negligible? Yes, thank you. Um, I found the. Um, I'm sorry. The. Uh, Amortization schedule, which gives us the exact amount that we could pull down based on the loan amount, and it's about 250000 that we okay. make more from that. And so one of the thought processes we've had, and we'll bring this um, more information on this later, is that we sweep that into Fund 17 to help offset. Great lines. Great lines. <laughs> Thank you. Any public comment on this item? So as we approach and surpass our GAN limit from the previous year, which is the case this year and the case in previous years, we go back with a resolution to increase it and transfer it to the 
<laughs> Any public comment? Any questions? Motion. So I'm going to say. Okay, Carol. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Here's the slide vote. Action item 24 approval resolution number 1728 temporary interest fund transfer of six million from the special reserve to non capital allocation to the general fund. Yeah. This is something we do annually. It's based on our property tax receipts, which are by far by high by far and away our highest revenue. And what we will do is do a temporary borrow from ourselves from Fund 17. And we'll come back to you in uh, usually January with an information item stating that we have put the money back into Fund 17. So again, this is just for cash flow based on our, our um, having the property tax receipts. Public comment? Any public questions? Motion. So do you come back for an action item for us? Or you put it back? Or you, this is the motion. Just tell us. Just, so that's Ken and I mean picky people. We ask that it specifically come at a board meeting so that we can reassure the public that it was in temporary. I was trying to remember if that's what that's what? Right. I'm just asking that. Yes. Yes. You'll see it in the monthly financial statements after that. Right. And it keeps us from having to issue trends, which right. many other districts have to do. And that costs us. And that costs three percent of our right. interest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, because we did that for many years before we were able to involve in ourselves. I would ask the public comments that motion. So moved. Second. Carol, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Raise the slide vote. Okay. So I have 25 board member re requests. I am for future meetings request information or general comments. Okay. Um, I got to tour Tuckerville uh, and the high school today. It was at the elementary school. It's wonderful to see mindfulness being taught as like a lesson, and then mindfulness actually applied in lessons. But it was really interesting to see how, it, you know, as it builds, as the program builds, it's just built in versus teaching what it actually means, right? And then later, it's just part of, it's part of their day, part of the teacher's lesson work. And so that was wonderful. And then uh, watching group math was fun, but that was really different than I remember math, right? right? There's, there's a way we do math. It wasn't math. I don't remember math, so. That's <laughs> 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 And so that was nice to see. And then um, it was really interesting because the elementary school kids couldn't hear less if they walked into the class. They could do no longer day. The high school kids, it's like, you are they getting there? Just right where you're not interjecting your day. They're like, why are adults in the class? What's going on? And so it's interesting to try to squeeze in. And it's better to see them kind of engage with them come here. And then so noted was the furniture. It just transformed spaces. And with some of the teachers, I I bet they did not like clearing out all the rooms with their stuff, but they didn't enjoy that process. But like, like, boy, going in the room, like for kids, had to not be overwhelmed by all that stuff, right? And so that was really fascinating. And the furniture gets a streamlined, and everyone uses it differently. You can see from it differently, the teachers should play it differently. And so it was wonderful to see. And then um, I did get to hear the keynote speaker, which is amazing. And I get to go to a couple of the different um, classes when Dr. Keller was teaching me about lollipop moments. So, and I thought I was going to cry. I thought, oh no, it's going to fall in my lollipop moments too, and not just observing. <laughs> right? And it was nice, I was just observing. Um, but it was really interesting for, um, for as a group, for them to all reach back into their lives and share a moment where someone really made a difference in their life. And for them to do that as a group, and then there was one person who said, I do that daily for myself. And it was really neat that she reflects on her own day and kind of finds her lollipop before she goes to sleep. And I'm like, oh, I should practice that for two months for practice. And uh, the other ones that are talking about the brain and applying what they're learning, and that once you learn something, it's very hard to, for the brain to do it another way. And they're doing that by writing the mirror upside down, or the track goes and putting the mirror down, and then doing it to be able to then read it in America. So, and the fact that once you learn how to write with one hand or once you learn how to write, it's really difficult to write another way. And really it's your insights to help them just apply.
explain what they learned about the brain and not playing in the moment. It was, it was fascinating. It's really, it was really cool. They were so, everyone in the rooms were so connected with each other, no matter what the topic was. I think that was one of the glories of these things. Like the, the staff and like, if, whether they knew each other or not, they all just seemed so much more connected. And the tasks they were doing, the story they were sharing, and just, it was like that. Jason now having a particular very tall, fancy, um, having a contract that actually has seven column and we're getting normed for that. I would be interested to see what what other districts we may be around regarding assistant superintendents and other administrate uh, other administrators as to are they on a contract? Because uh, I will reiterate, we have the right people on the bus right now. And I'm very very confident of that, and so I um, it's it. Just if you would explore that for me, I would be really appreciative. Um, I, I cannot tell you how excited I am about No Place for Hate. I think the common language, the shared K-12 experience, TK-12, is gonna be so impactful. And just such a, not that we weren't doing great things before, but the fact that it's going to be common and continuous, I just think is, is incredible. Um, I would really like it when people get married to other people's kids in the district, mm -hmm. i.e. Katie Myers who married Stacy's son. Yeah. If, if I'm like, who is Katie Chiardi? They got the wrong person here. So if we can just get <laughs> ahead of stuff, um, that kind of stuff happens. <laughs> and they're, they're, they're the kids off too. They're like, wait, who the heck? They're 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 they're
that's a, a middle age age group is huge on that usage. And so they need to make sure whatever they're taking that it's locked up so that their students don't have access to it in the home. And that's it's kind of an, one of those quiet things that you don't see as much because it's you can't smell it like alcohol, but it's really, really destructive. So I want us to add that to our list of what we um, we don't do it, but whoever informs parents and things that we need to be careful and responsible about. And then I did meet uh, with the auditor today and based on what you said, I mean, it was just so, it didn't even seem to me like Jeff was as new here as he is, because it's been said, they asked me about the transition, and I said, really, it's going to transition, and I think it was really uh, easy for the board, because you'd already been here in the other position, and had done such a outstanding job, so that, and then because Dean was supportive of him moving into position. Similar to the transition when Norma really was a supportive of being moving. So that you've been really fortunate to have all those years of good consistency. So it was, it was really good. And they they are diligent, doing their due diligence. So it's, it is important. Thank you. I have a motion for adjournment. I'll move to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Tomorrow, I should say that our next meeting is uh, Tuesday, September 26th. Here in the building at 6 and it will be a study session. Thank you. 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 Thank you.